Hello guys, this is M and welcome to the channel. 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 You might have already guessed what the concept of this video is and that's symbolically. Recursion is a method of programming where the solution to the problem depends upon the smaller instances of the same problem. On contrary to iterative, if you're using while, do while or for loop, you're doing it iteratively. So if you want to find the solution, let's say of count to n, you would do iteratively by using for loop. Let's say you're doing like this. So how are you doing it? You're doing it by changing the value of i. On contrary, in recursion, you have to change the state. And what do I mean about it? In recursion, you're going to call a function in function itself. And it absolutely makes sense. If you have a main problem, which can be divided into sub problems. But here's the thing. There is no problem which can't be solved iteratively, but with recursively. But why do we go with recursion? and why it is often recommended. It is because using recursion, we can write one of the most elegant pieces of code. And obviously, it is more maintainable, compact, and nice. Recursive programs are elegant. Here's why. Let's take an example. Let's find the sum of n natural numbers. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 gives us 15. If you want to write the same in the programming language, you will write something like this. You are changing the value of i and saving it in sum and afterwards returning it. But let's see this program in a different fashion. Let's flip this. 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1. This also gives us 15 but this gives another perspective. Sum of i, let's say sum of i is a function that calculates this. Sum of 5 is nothing but 5 plus sum of 4. 4 Let's generalize this. So 5, let's say we've generalized it to n and 4 becomes n minus 1. So if you want to find the sum of n, it is nothing but sum of n plus n. But here's the base case. You can't do it over and over and over again and it goes to infinite loop. Rather, you have to find the terminating condition just like in a loop. The terminating condition here is 1. Once you reach 1, you know that the sum is always 1. So, if you want to convert this iterative program, you would convert it to into something like this. This is a recursive program. And n plus n minus 1, sum of n minus 1, is nothing but the recursive expression. For every recursive program, we need to identify the sub-problems to the main problem. Sub-problems are nothing but at the smallest version of the main problem which can be solved with or without any dependencies on the different problem. But there's a special case called base case which is nothing but a special version of the sub-problem which can be solved almost atomically without any dependency. Let's take an example. A classical example in recursion is a factorial. 4 factorial is found out by calculating like this or 5 factorial like this and 6 like this and 7 like this. And you get the point now. The process to every recursive program is like a ladder. To get to the third step, first you need to find first and second step. In the same way, in factorial, to first find the factorial of n, you need to find the factorial of n minus 1. But let's identify the base case for this. In all the factorials here, you're ending at 1. And we know that the factorial of 1 is always 1 factorial. The recursive program for the factorial is like this. For the first time, it might look a bit weird because we are defining factorial function in the function itself. But it is totally possible. Let's see in program runtime how it behaves. For every program in an executable form, it has two kinds of memory. One is stack and other is heap. Let's keep heap aside. but Stack is a data structure which follows LIFO. LIFO is first in, last in and first out. So to keep history of all the functions which are called in during the program execution, a stack contains another small data structure called frame. 
frame contains all the variables, local variables, temporary variables, which are required for the program functions execution. Now, let us look at the call stack during the execution of factorial called with parameter 4. So the first frame holds the value of n as 4. Then a call to the factorial is made again. This is because we already know that recursion expression is n into factorial of n minus 1. So local variable now holds 3 to the new call. A new frame is added to the stack. And again factorial is made with the call 2. Thank God we haven't taken a bigger number, right? Okay, now let's hit the base case. That is when n is equal to 1. When we hit the base case, we return the value 1 as we know that factorial of 1 is always 1. After returning the frame is discarded from the stack. The return value is used to calculate 2 into 1 and the result is then returned and the frame is discarded. Similarly, 6 is also returned and finally the result is returned as 24 by calculating 6 into 4. This is how recursion behaves in execution. Now let's get back to our discussion. For slight variation, let's look at these pictures. Aren't these beautiful? And guess what? These are all generated by computer. Computer graphic details. But did you ever wonder how these are created? The same question has struck me. That is why this video, we are gonna try to mimic these things and let's try to create a tree using recursion. From all the examples which we have seen in the images, this is my version of fractal tree. It is a little bit complicated than which we will be coding now or I will be explaining. But as you can see, there is a lot of potential with this concept. I will link this code in the description below and I will I wish you to look at it and develop upon it. But let's look at the simple version of this. So this is the simplest version of fractal tree we can create in very less time. And why fractal tree in the first place? Fractal means repeating of similar kind. And if you observe this tree very closely, you can see that every branch or every branching out point is a tree in itself. And this is a factorial tree. Factorial is used in many other concepts to create amazing patterns. And in here, the application is to create a tree. So let's look at the code and understand how we are using recursion concept here. And by this time, I know you might have already guessed where we have used this. But let's look at how we are using p file library to create this. So this is the JS file that we are using to draw the tree. Every p file program contains one setup and one draw function. Setup is called one time for the program execution and draw is called repeatedly over and over again. In setup, we are initializing few variables. The base height is used in the program and draw function, we are actually drawing the tree. This translate is used to move the origin to those particular points. Generally in graphics, the origin is set as top left corner, but we are actually drawing the trunk from the center of the canvas. So we want to first move the origin. Then we are calling the branch function that is actually have the logic to draw the tree. Let's ignore this part now because this is the base case you might have already known. But ignoring that, this is these two lines are used to draw the trunk of the tree. That is nothing but this portion of the tree. Then this lines of code is used to draw, draw the right side of the tree. So right side of the trunk. That's why I have color coded this part of line as red. So what we are doing, we are rotating the origin by the particular angle and we are just drawing the line and 
cutting the size of the line by some portion by 0.6 and again from there we are actually drawing the function branch and so if you observe from this portion from this point if you see we have again a red portion of the tree so similarly we are calling the branch function again from that point if you have already guessed the first portion of the tree which is drawn on the screen is this red portion on the screen but so this can go into the infinite loop very easily right so where we are terminating it we are actually terminating it with using a limit height we are initialized it to 5.5 so whenever the height of the tree reaches the 5.5 height it just returns so we are using this push and pop function to store the states origin states we are changing it here again these lines of code is used to draw draw the yellow portion of the tree so in a similar fashion we will be drawing this yellow part and this is how the far complicated fractal trees can be drawn with very simple and elegant code using recursion recursion is great and we know and we have seen enough examples in this video we can write one of the simplest and elegant code using recursion but however there is one concern if you haven't configured your base cases correctly you might end up in stacks limit or exceeding the stacks limit and even if you have configure your base case correctly there might be a case that your application is using extensive resources either of the cases your apps performance and the usability degrades very quickly and what you have to do there's a class of recursion programs called tail recursions actually let me tell you about a tail call a tail call is a call where you write the function call at the end of the execution of the other function in that case a function frame need not store any local variables or any context to the particular function because all the execution has to do is to call another function so here are the examples of few tail calls these may not be the recursion but these are the similar ones which we will be using in the recursion as well if you see the factorial this might be look as a tail call but it is not because after returning or after calling the function we are still adding up to the n so i recommend you guys to look into the tail recursion and in quickly to understand and try to go through that class of recursion to make your application more dynamic and more fluid and user friendly and i'll see you in the next one